It's another Thursday night at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So, of course, you know that means it's time for a self-publishing question and answer here with Kelly and I. And uh, there is some relevant news we want to share with you in the world of self-publishing. So you're going to want to make sure that you stay tuned. Welcome to Self-Publishing with Dale. And Kelly. And if you came here, you probably came here to learn about publishing books that sell, and building an unstoppable brand. And uh, this is another Thursday night, so we're glad that you all have come to join us. And uh, without any further ado, let's just jump right into the relevant news. And uh, before we do that, people watching the replay, could you do me a huge favor? Just give us one minute here so we can say what's up to all of the people that have shown up here in the live broadcast. So who all do we have here, Kelly? Richard Hislop, lots of friends that stopped by earlier today, so thank you. Mark Brownless, Two Blue Eyes, M. Louise, Rosie Ran, uh, Jan Murray, what is going on, Mojo? Uh, and honor you, I will be changing my live streams, Mojo, so you're welcome. Um, <laughs> Risa Faye, what's going on? What's Shannon! Up? Shannon Vlogs, how's it going, Shannon? Shannon's a girl. Um, and anyone else who rose above and has been here a while, hello, what's up? Who is Nick Nemen? Risa Fay, did you just ask that? You go stand on the corner, okay? You go stand on the corner. But first, before you do that, let's tell you all about the relevant news today. So before we jump into the question and answer, we're going to tell you about the news. There's some big news, and of course, you guys know a little bit of it already. If you got a guess, drop it inside the chat. But first, we're going to go ahead and talk about what was released today. Audiobook Creation Exchange extended their bounty program. Did you catch this one at all? Yeah. So here's how it works. Uh, Willie May, big shout out to my boy Willie. He's out there in California. And uh, he was a little confused about this and how it's working. So the bounty program works like this, or it did at one point and continues to function this way. It originally worked that if somebody got an Audible membership via your book, your audiobook, then you would get what was called a bounty for $50. Now, if it was a 50-50 split with your narrator, then you would get 25 and your narrator would get 25. Now, this could be done completely 100% just organically. So if somebody just showed up on Audible, they see that, oh, well, here's this book by Kelly, it's about veganism, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pick it up for free when I get Audible and they stay on for the Audible membership. Well, Kelly got a $50 bonus. However, they decided more recently, eh, eh, that ain't working. We're not gonna allow you to have this free stuff organically, but here's what we will do. If you refer people over through your specific link and they get an Audible membership, then you now get a $75 bonus. Now it's kind of weird because your 50-50 split would normally be a 50-50, but it would be $50 for you, $25 for your narrator. So the narrator still gets the $25, but you get a $25 bump. Well, it was supposed to be gone. The $50 program was supposed to be over back in September, but ACX announced today, whoa, 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 hang on, hang on. Our bad, our bad. Okay, we're gonna keep the $50 thing around until March. 31st of 2019. So applause, applause, applause. Isn't that good news or what? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. $50 bonus. How many of you like the news that you've heard so far? I, I, I kind of, I really, I like $50 for just my stuff sitting there. I know the Mickelson twins are going to freaking love that. Love it, love it, love it. So at any rate, the ACX extends their bounty program to March 31st, 2019. All right. Hey, Draft the Digital just uh, sent an email out about a week or so ago. By the way, we're catching up over the last couple of weeks here, so there's going to be some information that might be kind of old, kind of new, but either way, we're trying to catch up on these things. But d to d has given themselves a little bit of facelift. You can expect the same services from them, but now the interface is a little bit more easy to digest, easy to kind of get around. So be prepared for that. And that way you know what's going on. So Draft the Digital, love it. If you guys have not tried them out before, they are fantastic. And by the way, if you guys see Kelly like looking down, she, she is in interacting with you on chat. Just so that way everybody's like, geez, she seems like she's just completely complacent. All right, uh, next news. Publish Drive 
public service announcement and they specifically reached out to me about a week ago this is from Pablo at the team of Publish Drive they said I have some important thing to share with you I wanted to give you a heads up about possible data breach or excuse me data security incident what we discovered with Publish Drive and might be useful to warn members of your community as well important to note that Publish Drive has not been hacked we do not have a data leak an unauthorized third party obtained email and password lists from previous data breaches of other companies. We suggest authors to change their password on all platforms they might use for self-publishing. So big shout out to the Publish Drive team for getting us in the know. I think it's always a best practice to make sure that you are changing out your password on the regular, especially if you've been around this business long enough that you know it's been longer than a year you might want to update your password. Just do that, it's just for safety's sake. You want to make sure that you're protecting your accounts. So they wanted to further stress, there was no data breach at Publish Drive, but it was through other companies. So there you go. All right, hey, holiday submission schedules, folks. It's just rolling out. I'm getting ones from Smashwords and Drafted Digital, Publish Drive. Folks, do not wait till the last minute to upload your ebooks, your, your print books, if you want to get it out into the market. There's a lot of them that here in the first week and going into next week here, December, that if you don't have those things up now, you're gonna lose out big. So get those submissions like yesterday. All right. Smashwords, of course, they have their end of year sale. Just wanna kinda let you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a fan of Smashwords. They, uh, it's a love-hate relationship. The uh, interface isn't the greatest in the world, but I tell you what, I like the paycheck that they send me on a monthly basis. And this is no exception. If you happen to be distributing through Smashwords, keep an eye out for their emails because every now and then they have these pop-up sales. And I find any time they do these sales, my numbers go whoosh, they shoot up because it seems like they pour gas over that fire and it really kind of ramps up. So the end of year sale with it being quarter four and a big sale, Smashwords really gets behind it. So I highly, highly, highly recommend if you've got anything on Smashwords, get into your dashboard and consider utilizing some of that and driving some of your traffic over towards that direction as well. So there is that. And they also had announced that there is an algorithm update over on Smashwords. So they're trying to be a little bit more intuitive with their visitors um, browsing experience so they're they're trying to duplicate essentially what you see on other platforms so kudos smashwords and mark coker we appreciate you guys all right kelly cover this one well create space is not allowing new submissions i think it was as of a few days ago but i just learned of it this morning and for i don't know if anyone in here purchased my course it's now retired i'm mm -hmm. not releasing it for the public mm -hmm. i did up upload a few updates and once Gumroad does their whole approval thing, I'll email y'alls through Gumroad and let you know they're available for viewing. But I'm sure a lot of people have just played around and know what I'm gonna say, but they'll be there. Yeah, so uh, just be, be aware. I've been telling everybody for a while, uh, make the leap, get over to KDP. Now you really have no choice. Get over to KDP Print or utilize another avenue if you're looking for print book. Lulu, I just released a unboxing video last night of Lulu, exemplary service, their quality product, it's just really awesome. Speaking of, you get the opportunity, make sure that you go and you, you continue to watch the playlist series. It's an official playlist series called the Self-Published Book Unboxing Series. This is gonna go all the way through next week. I'm gonna be doing comparisons over the next few days after today, and then on Monday, gonna be actually unboxing a lightning source book. You know where lightning source is through, right? Ingram Sparks. Sort of. Uh, Ingram Spark is actually a subsidiary of Ingram. So Lightning Source and Ingram Spark kind of work hand in hand. Here's a fun fact, and I'll share this inside the unboxing video. Lightning Source is more intended for the publisher, whereas Ingram Spark is more for the kind of the author, the person who's just gonna put out like say three to six books, whereas the other one's gonna be a little bit heavier. But either way, it's the still fulfilled on the same print presses. So you guys will get to find out. Spoiler alert, it is really, really good quality. Loving some of this quality. Big shout out to a uh, friend of the channel here, Audrey Levi, Dr. Audrey Levi. And uh, we're gonna be covering that on Monday. So keep an eye on the channel here. Well, 
What are any questions you have here for self-publishing books? We want to hear. Load it on up. This is a fun time. Let's hang out. Let's chat. I see there's 38 people here right now. Um, so with that being said, I do have a viewer question. You ready for this? Yeah, and then I have a question after that. Excellent. So here's the thing is, folks, if you want to submit your viewer question, we'll give you a shout out. And if you've got a book that you would like us to mention or whatnot, you want to reach out to me at Dale at selfpublishingwithdale.com. Drop in your question. And if we choose yours, we'll give you a big shout out here. So big shout out to good friend here of the channel and also one of the indie author spotlight uh, folks that I had brought here, Gary McPherson. And Gary actually had reached out to me and said, you may have covered this already in one of your shows. If not, I'd love to see a show around pricing ebooks as well as print. Also, I'd like to see you guys cover self-publishing ebook growth. So we talked a little bit about pricing in the past, but this is what kind of picked my interest here is when he brought this up. This is why I feel like I burned myself on this first novel. I focused a lot on print books in the bookstores. I did this based on all the reports claiming ebook sales were starting to slow and the print books were making a comeback. So far, I do not see this, especially compared to the numbers you all get online. So uh, just a real quick um, reveal here. This is Gary's book, by the way. Uh, great, great book. This is actually one that was done by Ingram Spark, oddly enough. Um, but at any rate, great, great quality book. And what he's bringing up, and I think that there's a lot of misunderstandings that people maybe have heard me say in previous broadcasts that they say um, that ebooks is seeing a decline. It's so negligible, the, the amount of sales drop, like it's like 5%. So I think that anybody, if you're losing 5% of your sales, it's not a big deal. But one of the things he did was he shared how it's more affecting traditional publishers than it is the indie author community. The indie author community is actually on the rise and on ebook sales. So <clears throat> I don't want to ever come off as saying that ebooks aren't worth it. Ebooks are definitely worth it. They can definitely profit and bring you in some good money. However, global publication profits are driven from actual print books. That's the largest chunk of the sales, globally speaking. Now, as far as units being sold in ebooks, ebooks sell, outsell all of their other predecessors. But the thing is, they're cheaper. So that's, that's where it comes from. Now, as far as pricing goes, this varies per niche. I mean, is there anything that you would recommend for pricing when it comes to like eBooks and print books? I mean, eBooks, I don't really do right now. So I price it 99 cents and sit and forget. As far as paperbacks for my no content books, I try to get about a $2 royalty. Mm -hmm. So most of mine are priced at $6.99. I'm not sure if that's the same for a written book. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, it just really depends on the value that you have within your pages and how seriously. So for instance, Kelly's pretty content with just, you know, getting a little extra cash in her pocket. It's not her passion anymore. Not so much was it before anyways, but you like the paychecks there at one point. Those paychecks were nice. Um, but in any event, um, you know, for, for my perspective, this is such a difficult question to answer because it's going to vary per situation. So for instance, someone one time had saw the pricing of one of my eBooks at $7.99 and they were like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. I'm like, well, it's a freaking fitness program that under normal circumstances, I usually hand out on a one-on-one -on -one basis up to about 80 to $90. So I'm like, $7.99 is like 10% of that. So I don't think that that's going to be, if anything, I'm pricing it too cheap in my opinion. However, someone else might feel, okay, well, kind of like if Kelly doesn't really care, if she had my book, I'm sure she'd just go 99 cents. So that way it just spikes the sales and she gets a regular passive income on that. Uh, Gary, for someone like you coming into the business, since you've got one book, something that Johnny Andrews recommends is get about four to six books in your back catalog and then that's where you're going to probably start to reconsider your pricing structure for now you want to probably make this your business card get it out into many hand as you can so but don't do it at the detriment of your your business or your livelihood so i sorry to give such a vague answer but it's really it's kind of tough uh look in your market look in your niche and see what else is everybody's pricing at 
All righty. So what's our question? So we got uh, Rosie Rand asked, are audiobooks the hot thing for 2019? People just do audiobooks or they first do Kindle and paperback? Well, for me, I've done the whole ghost writing and um, publishing thing before and I'm like, nah. But audio is getting so popular and I've heard um, our friends, the Mickelson twins, doing well. So I want to give it another shot. And this time around, I might write specifically for the audiobooks as vice versa before I used to just publish titles and then get the audiobook out. Mm -hmm. um, I just also want to diversify and get another stream of income with Amazon. It's the safe thing to do. So as I was saying earlier today, Rosie, in the chat, I'm still trying to figure out if I'm going to do ACX 90% merch, no content books, but that is why I'm personally doing it. Do you think audiobooks are the hot thing for 2019? Yeah, it's, it's on the rise. Over the past five years, it's had a incremental growth. Uh, and I think that over the past five years, it ends up being breaking out like 25% growth in global sales. Would I focus 100% on audiobook? No, because if you're going to create the content, then you might as well at least put it out on ebook, if not on print book or both altogether. So go through the effort of getting all that stuff put together. And I think the Mickelson twins would agree with me in that, you know, you might as well, if you've got the content, what they kind of look at is the twins share, and sorry, spoiler alert for those of you that don't have the Audiobook Income Academy, which by the way, you can get that at selfpublishingwithdale.com slash ACX course. But um, in any event, they look at audiobook as the end game. Uh, that's, that's where they're headed to. So they kind of reverse engineer how they do the system. So what they'll do is they'll go and they'll study what is really hot and what is being what is the most consumable, most digested content through audio, download, downloadable audiobooks, and they work backwards from there. So they will go through and they'll construct the actual other models and then put out the audiobook. That's really the end goal is trying to get that audiobook. Um, it's really not as hard as you would think. It, it's, it's not actually, and it's not as expensive as you would think. I know uh, just having a conversation with one of our fellow, um, viewers here and people in the community and uh, I she, see she's already popped in here I'd already showed her book and she shows up right afterwards but Audrey and I were talking that you know there are some people that charge an arm and a leg for audiobook narration and folks it doesn't have to cost thousands of dollars especially if it's a shorter book or it's not that long I mean would you agree with that sorry I was reading a question what was that <laughs> It doesn't have to cost all that much. Oh, no, not at all. And there's some of our friends, I'm not going to name names, that do it themselves. Yeah. And, um, well, Willie May, we can go ahead and just say right off. Oh, I here. wasn't thinking about Willie, but yeah, Willie yeah. does it himself. Willie May does his own. Um, I know that Kevin McGuire is starting to work on it, which, by the way, good morning, Kevin. I'm sure he's waking up and watching this right about now. It's night. Oh, that's right. He'll watch on the replay. Yeah, he's not here. Um, but yeah, I, I'm going to do the ebook and paperback too, but reverse engineer like the twins do right yeah so sure. Jay, so yeah it, it just really depends on what you want to get out of it i really think that if you can build still build a brand and work around all three of those models you're going to win big because here's the thing is uh fact i actually have a book on personal training okay it literally like i just didn't put any thought into it i put together an outline i had a voice dictated i had it edited I had it put into a paperback, um, ebook, and then I kind of just did audiobook for the fun of it. Does not do worth a darn on ebook, doesn't do worth a darn on print, but it, it freaking does pretty darn good on audiobook. It brings in a fair chunk of change, so much so that I'm kind of regretting doing a 50 50 split because I was like, oh, <laughs> that could have been more money. So that's that's why it's, it's good to diversify what you're doing for your publications because. You just never know how well something's going to do on a, on a given platform. I mean, what is what has been your experience? Sorry, I keep reading questions. Yeah, wait for the questions. <laughs> they'll, they'll be there. Okay. Folks, we don't answer your questions right away. We're coming to you. I was paying attention to the questions. Okay, so... <laughs> 
folks, she needs to drink some more coffee and kombucha before she gets on these, these lives here. What do you think about diversification? I was talking about personal training, my personal training book that did really well on audiobook, but terribly on the other two platforms. Have you had an instance like that where something did really good on one platform, but terrible on another? No. Well, yeah, one of my books that I had outsourced, it's a self-help book, I think it's poorly written. I mean, I did my best. I edited it, and it's, I still put it out it's there. It's good, guys. Actually, I've heard it. Um, the ebook is meh. It's translated into a few different languages. Yeah. It does meh. But the audiobook, I did a 50-50 split. Mm -hmm. It's made me, I think, seven or eight hundred dollars. Even with a 50-50 split. It was a good narrator, split. though. So it was a really good narrator. That, that's going to be the thing: is you can probably have a marginal written marginally written book and i'm not telling everybody to go out there and write a bunch of drivel okay but you can have a marginally written book but if you get a good narrator they'll 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 polish that turd make it sound awesome and i don't regret doing a 50 50 split because yeah. it was back when you know it was a little no money so i'm right, right. um, very thankful for that book kelly um, loves her audience dale don't don't pish me <laughs> <laughs> risa Art. um let's see George Stefan, is giving your book to a translator on Fiverr or some freelance site risky? How can you know they won't steal your content? How do you get over this fear? I go to a, a, a trusted site um, somewhere that, you know, Fiverr, unfortunately, there's no way for the, to vet the actual work as being something good unless you took that work, went to another translator that had no relation to the first one and had it, had it done. Uh, I would recommend going to actual services. So you've heard me re reference rev.com. I find them very, uh, a great service. They're very reputable. I've even spoke to one of the folks over at Rev, person to person over at Vid Summit in Los Angeles not too long ago. So um, yeah, you know, uh, there there is that fear and you know, but I mean, it's the same fear of what if you cross the road, you might get run over by a car. You're gonna have to at some point Take that leap of faith and find the right person that has a track record that is good and as well as has a notable name. So like for instance, rep.com isn't going to go over and get a bunch of bunk translators. Why? Because their reputation's on the line. Uh, same thing would go if I recommend a service to you folks. I'm not going to tell you some unproven. I get so many product people that reach out to me on a regular basis that want me to check out their products. I mean, we were just talking about a couple of them. And uh, I get a lot of them that want me to you know, endorse their stuff, but I'm not willing to share that with you folks just because I don't know their track record yet. I don't know what kind of a product they have to offer. I don't know what they've done before. So that's why I'm always very, very careful and cautious. So if you try to find a translator, make sure that they have a history of translating, that they have some type of public reach. In other words, that they stand something to lose if they give you shoddy work, and then you can go from there. Cool. Yeah. Um, Aaron, ooh, it just went back. Uh, Aaron Chase asked about are any of your audio books. Uh, sorry, it scrolled up on me. Mm -hmm. He time. asked, oh, have any of your Audible books came out yet and how are your sales? Aaron, I've had uh, Audible books out for a while. I've been doing this even longer than the, the twins have been in, so... Um, just because I interview somebody on the show doesn't necessarily mean that I don't know about the information. So, uh, yes, my audio books have come out and they, I get fairly regular sales. Now, am I pulling in those crazy killer Mickelson twin months? Not yet, no. I haven't published any audio books since I learned about what the Mickelson twins are doing. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm like him. I think my first audiobook, the one that kills it with the 50 50 split, came out in 2015. Mm -hmm. So I get a little bit of chunk of change, but I don't put much effort into it. But um, 2019, I'll be starting more. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure, Aaron, if that was what you were shooting for, but it treats me well. I get a nice little chunk of change uh, every month from ACX. They, they take care of me, it's despite most of my books being 50 50 split. Now, I will say this that. Prior to me going through the Audiobook Income Academy of the Twins, I actually had um, sat down and talked with them. They came here into Columbus and they really opened up my eyes to, you know, ponying up the expenses, getting a good narrator and such. And upon 
actually trying out some of the methodology and some of the best practices, I literally, I launched a book, cost me about $23. This was a short read. And I, within a couple days, already made the money back and some. So it's, it's very possible for you to, to do it. It's just think long game when it comes to audiobook folks, because there's going to come sometimes that some of them are going to do really, really well right out the rip and other ones are going to kind of hang about there and then they just slowly increase. So that personal training one's a great example. That one just started out kind of slow and then it just boom, it shot up for some reason. Michelle Martin, instantpublisher.com seems really good. Have you thought of using them to send to a prep center and have them shipped out? I've never heard of Instant Publisher. I just bookmark them. I know with all our small apartment, I'm not willing to have a stack of books. No. Possibly FBA, but that's possibly quarter three or quarter four of next year because I still don't want to deal with sales tax. That's all I know. Yeah. Uh, likewise, I, I, I will agree with that. If there's any books that I would like to, to keep on my shelf or the ones I enjoy reading, and of course, you know, ones that come from friends, family, uh, folks like you that send them on over to me, I really do appreciate that. But for the most part, I don't literally, I'm going to look on my shelf right now. I, with the exception of probably a couple of the no content books, I don't have a single copy of my own books, which is kind of a shame. You would think I would have a few of my own that I could hand out to people, but I've already given them all out and I don't feel like ordering more. Um, Walter Weyburn. I don't... Hey, what's up, Walter Weyburn? How you doing, buddy? I don't have an Amazon account, but I do have a CrateSpace account. So what happens to my books on CrateSpace? Okay, uh, great. I'm glad you brought this up. Actually, a good friend here at the channel, Nafis, actually had a similar issue he had shared on a previous broadcast. Nafis, hopefully you don't mind me bringing this up because I know that you brought it up during the live chat. But at any rate, he had the same issue. And what KDP suggested to us, to him, and I'm going to suggest to you as well, is you've got this Create Space account, so it needs to be merged somewhere. Reach out to them and let them know the extenuating circumstances and set yourself up a new KDP account. Here's my recommendation is if you do set up a KDP account, one, okay, do not use the same business in information that you did before. So in other words, whatever your, I don't know what reason your KDP account got shut down for, I won't even go into it, but I would recommend that first of all, A, you're gonna have to use a different EIN and gotta use a legit one obviously, or if you've never used a social security number, so on and so forth. Sorry, I can't tell you for what tax reasons, but any rate, different bank bank account information it needs to be just completely like a new entity altogether so that way you can migrate it on over into a new kdp account that's about the safest way and or reach out to kdp print team let them know i've got this entire back catalog um and from my understanding uh nafi said it was a good good experience and had everything taken care of and merged with no issue so which by the way we're missing you nafis where are you at buddy uh, Boom Blogger, where to get first reviews? Uh, first reviews, gosh, there's a really good one. Actually, head over to archangelinc.com and there's actually a blog post on there about this. So my good buddy Rob Archangel put this one out. We can speak about getting reviews ad nauseum. And uh, I've already kind of addressed this with you, Boom Blogger, about this in another video. The best way to get reviews is publish good books. Ask for it in the back and then the front of your book. So you go in, hey, it's awesome that you have picked up this book. It'd mean the world to me if you would leave an honest review of it once when you're finished reading it. Okay? Skip to the end of the book. Really happy that you went through and read this book. It'd mean the world to me if you would leave an honest review of this book. Done. There are so many other methodologies. You can you know, go into the community that you write within, the niche, and start to build relationships. Because in turn, what's going to end up happening? So, you know, as a for instance, a good friend here of the channel and former coaching student, Kevin McGuire, okay? Kevin's got a couple books out. I've been talking to Kevin for a couple years now. He's one of the day oneers here of this channel. I bought this, okay, because one, I like Kevin. Kevin's a great guy. For two, I left a review over on Audible, which oddly enough, I can actually leave reviews of books on Audible, not Amazon. But in any event, I left it because I like him. I like his content and I felt like, you know what, I owe this to him. And why? Because he took the time to build a relationship with other people. And I think that, you know, some of you folks can kind of understand this. 
If you're watching this channel and you've seen me interact with you, the Mojos, the M. Louise Fairleys, uh, let's see here, um, the Boom Bloggers, the Audrey Levi's, those folks that I build the relationship with, how much more likely are you to give a review of one of my books versus some random person you don't know? Probably little to none. Okay, you probably would go through, let's say for instance, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up this book. I'm through here and I read it and I go, huh, okay, set it off to the side. Whereas if I actually know, which this is actually a fun fact, this was written by my eighth grade English teacher, Mr. Jones, and uh, in any event, uh, I know Mr. Jones. I'm probably gonna leave a review for him because I know him. I'm more apt to actually leaving a review. And here's the funny thing is, he doesn't even have to ask me. Kevin McGuire never asked once for a review from me, ever. I just felt like that was the, what I should be doing. So it's not gonna happen right away, Boom Blogger. You just gotta look at the long game. But I'm gonna tell you this, I've got some books that crush it, that had little to no reviews. I had one book, this was actually about two years ago, launched it two years ago, right? Made me a couple grand, one month, zero reviews, zero. So it is very possible. I would say don't get hung up on the whole review process. Go over to archangelinc.com and check out their blog post based on it. They just uh, had, I think, posted it today maybe. And they give some great recommendations. Also take a look over at booklaunchers.tv. Julie talks a little bit about review gathering as well. Uh, keep it on the clean, keep it on the straight and narrow. Um, Beauty Bubble asks, when would you drop the price during the holiday shopping days? You first. I don't. You guys want to hear what I do? I kick it up. I kick it up. And um, this year probably is the exception to the rule. I literally have no time to spare to go in and kick it up. So I'm keeping it the same. Previous years though, I, I literally will, will mark the prices up because here's the funny thing is if you're selling enough units, on a particular book, Amazon will go in, and this is for print books, they'll mark it down. I, I think they've already done it for one of my books. I saw maybe it was the 90 day home workout plan. It's supposed to be priced at $14.99. They've already marked it down to $8.99. I'm like, okay, well, there you go. They still pay the full royalties. So uh, just, just keep that in mind. Uh, I would recommend that it's just gonna depend on what your end goal is. To me though, holiday season, people are more apt to open up their their bank accounts and their wallets and spend just a little bit more. So it just depends how, how you feel about it. Um, what do you think about posting Fortnite books against Amazon's TOS? This is from Aaron Chase. Do you agree that it's acceptable or is it a stupid decision like shooting yourself in the foot? Go ahead. Oh, it's retarded. Um, I, I didn't, he mentioned a couple people's names. I didn't mention them, but yeah. it's dumb. They, um, I mean, maybe Fortnite doesn't have a good legal team. I don't know if they're owned by Microsoft or I don't know. I don't know much about the gaming stuff, but what I do know is lawsuits happen. And it's, even though they get paid out now, mm -hmm. if these companies see that they could definitely sue for back royalties absolutely mm -hmm. so i mean i think it's retarded and if you want to do a long-term okay if you are on death's door and you need five thousand dollars to pay some medical bills go on with it mm -hmm. but if you want to build a long-term sustainable business stay far away from that garbage yeah far away yeah there was the same thing i saw like the diary of a wimpy kid diary of the people kept uh you know diary of minecraft things like that if it's somebody's intellectual property don't touch it with a 10-foot pole okay folks that's somebody else's intellectual property now some someone can probably make the argument that you know well they'll just shut my account down i'll just go open up another one uh hey ding dong someone's gonna want that money back at some point Okay, so unless you actually have ponied up the expenses for a really good legal team, you know, that is a dumb business practice. That is absolutely insanely stupid of you. And if you disagree with me, that's fine. That's fine. You know, at this point, if you're just in to just make a few bucks and get the heck out, you know, all the more power to you. But I don't want to be associated with you. And I think that vermin like you need to go over to another niche, you know, uh, somewhere else peddling your wares and your snake oils to other people because 
that's just that's bad practice. You're, you're stealing someone's intellectual property and not cool. It's the same people that will go out and put a Weight Watchers book out. That's freaking intellectual property, folks. That's trademark name. Of course, you're going to be welcoming in some issues. Don't use trademark names. Fun fact, you ready for this? Four Dummies, trademark name. Do not put out a Four Dummies book. Not a good idea. Or there is a merch shirt out right now. This is my Hallmark movie t-shirt. Oh, oh Lord, yeah, I saw that. And I they're was like, selling a lot of Yeah, that. wait till Hallmark gets a hold of that one right there. They'll be putting out a Hallmark movie, and guess what? Fred Savage is gonna play the part of you. Um, Actually, it's kinda cool. I want Fred Savage to play me. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, George Stefan, if you're outside of the U.S., can you get on ACX in a legitimate way? If you're Canadian, can't you get on ACX? Canadian, yeah. Hmm? Yeah. Canada has has a distribution now. They actually opened that up. Uh, might have been last year. Uh, they opened up Canada and Ireland at the same time. But if you're not in Canada, Ireland, or the States, and you want to get into audiobooks, check out uh, Find Away Voices and Authors Republic. Yeah. They don't have as big a royalties, but it's an opportunity mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, there there are people that are going to recommend some workarounds and you know obtaining a legal entity out in U.S. There's those those things, but I, I would just say just save yourself the heartache and trouble. Just go through Authors Republic or Find A Way Voices for now. Stay tuned to this channel though. Uh, I will announce updates as they roll out because ACX does anticipate on expanding to other markets beyond U.S., U.K., Canada, and Ireland. Boom Blogger wants to know, uh, did Spider-Man start KDP? No, Kevin Maguire is not Spider-Man. The books? Oh. Yeah. Just, they asked that question twice. Hmm. Um... Michelle Martin, when you talk about audio, are you only allowed to do your own written books or what's the rule? Now you can do, um, you don't have to narrate your own books. No. Um, but you can if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michelle Martin, yes, I saw the Hallmark t-shirt. How did Amazon allow that but not allow some of my basic own design t-shirts? Michelle, I'm feeling it. That's why I just don't care about merch by Amazon sometimes. Uh, you keep, I'm going to try to look it up. Yep. I'm going to try to figure out. She's looking up the, the listing. And it, it, if I remember, it was like there was some kind of like work around as far as the text goes. And I want to see if it's still. It was kind of, it was kind of goofy for sure. Yeah. Um, fun fact, if you really want to get in hot water with merch, use trademark terms and put dashes in between it. If you put dashes in between all the words, mm -hmm. it will bypass the um, automated thing majiggy that catches trademarks. So that's yeah. why they're able to get away with it. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find. <laughs> see all the questions. Yeah. See, is Kevin McGuire's a Spider-Man? No, Kevin McGuire's. I don't think Kevin is. Kevin, you can probably speak on that later on when you wake up. Um, let's see. I'm trying to find more questions. She's looking up the... Keith Wheeler, good to see you. I hope you had a good birthday. Keith Wheeler! Are you still focusing on content for Q4 or have you shifted more to 2019? My brain's already on 2019. Yeah. I'm on 2019 too. Yep. I... With a little bit of new content right now. I, I've done a little bit, you know, as much as I'm not a big fan of merch, I'm still putting up some designs and I'm trying out UK at this point, but it's just like minimal effort right now. I still just don't care about merch. Um, as far as publishing goes, my brain is right now shifting into 2019. I'm already working on my next full publication. I, I'm with him. I'm uploading a lot this week trying to wrap up my research that I did all year and just never did anything else besides research. But if they sell in Q4, awesome, but for the most part, 2019. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Boom Bob Blogger asks, can I mention some celebrities or famous people in my book if it will be a fake or truth? For example, Harry Potter like doing it or Mick, Mickey Jixon? Always did it? I don't know. Uh, are you talking about a fan fiction book? Fan fiction books are generally uh, a no-no. 
uh, on Amazon at least. Now, there are some platforms that actually do honor fan fiction. I'm forgetting the name of the actual platform right now. Mark Brownless would know this one. Uh, there was a, because I remember he and I were talking about fan fiction sites. Now, as far as, yeah, utilizing celebrities within your books, I mean, it's just that gray area. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't mess with it. it especially if it's Harry, Harry Potter is a fictional character, somebody's intellectual property. So I would say no. Now, I think you're saying Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson obviously was a very real character and a very real person, if you will. Celebrities are kind of that gray area. Just uh, be prepared that there's still an estate uh, about with Michael Jackson. So you, I mean, it's kind of playing with fire again. I wouldn't touch you know, it with a 10 foot pole. Yeah, I just wouldn't bother with it. You know, I, I don't know if you're looking for quick answers on this one, like uh, like something that will make you quick cash. To me, I think that there's better opportunities elsewhere. Um, Wattpad, thank you very much, Cover Design. I appreciate that. Um, Jamar Lofton just commented, mm -hmm. uh, I have completed my first project and it is done. I started looking at all your YouTube videos. You guys are very helpful oh, and completing your book. He gets like five banana stickers for One, that. One, two, three, four, five. And if Anthony's watching this later, yeah, I gave him five stickers. <laughs> <laughs> Miss you, Anthony. Um, oh, there we go. Risa Faye brought it up. Kindle Worlds. Wasn't there something called Kindle Worlds? Yes, uh, the, but they ended up closing that down. It might have been earlier this year because I know I was coaching Mark Brownless at the time and Mark and I were talking about the various ways they could do uh, fan fiction and get it out there. And Kindle Worlds was there, but there was only certain brands you could do. Like Veronica Mars was one of them, like the fan fiction you could do. There was certain ones you could do that were approved but like we were looking at ones for like James Bond, but there was nothing for James Bond at all. Um, so there, there are places you can do fan fiction and get paid for it and not get sued, get your pants sued off. Um, these are two different questions, but they're very similar. Any advice on marketing a book, especially for someone who doesn't have a huge following on social and also has Facebook advertising work for you? I'm horrible with Facebook advertising. I. Actually, David Gogren said this in a recent article on his site in that instead of trying to be the master of all ads, try to master one form of advertising. And I feel like I have maybe a tenuous grasp on Amazon advertising, aka AMS ads. So until I can kind of hammer that down and really nail it down and get, you know, get it down pat, I don't see myself breaking into Facebook ads. Now I've run Facebook ads for the self-publishing Medale brand with some marginal results. So some of you might have come here via Facebook and discovered this brand through that. And, um, but yeah, I haven't tried Facebook. Google, I've done some for, for Google AdWords uh, with uh, YouTube. So some of you might've discovered my channel through YouTube video ads. I've actually placed them on a lot of prominent self-publishing channels and it's cheap, cents on the dollar. Uh, there's many, many great tutorials out there that you can consider. Now, as far as you know, growing a following, here's, here's, what it, here's what I'm gonna suggest is, you gotta get neck deep in your niche, in that community, and you actually have to be present. You have to be there. And it's something that I kind of mentioned before about you know, Kevin McGuire and the reviews thing and such. You just gotta find that community and start to become part of it and contribute to that community of people. Because in due time, what's gonna end up happening is it's gonna to start to grow and, and grow massively. I really love talking about this and it's about growing a massive brand. And one of the things of growing a massive brand, a lot of people don't wanna hear this, it's that it requires work. I mean, was it easy for you to start your YouTube channel? No. No. It hasn't been easy for me, Lord knows. I've been doing it a lot longer and she accomplished three months what I did in about two years. So, uh, you know, it's gonna change from one person to the next, but I, I love talking about this as far as brand building goes. So my recommendation is if you wanna get, reach the following that you want to, you gotta get neck deep in it. And it's, there's no easy answer. I mean, if you're a person that is into vegan cooking, 
you got to go find where the people are congregating most when it comes to vegan cooking. If you're a person that is into prepping, get into the preppers community and start to talk with people and interact and exchange. It's going to feel awkward at first. It's almost like showing up to a dinner party. You and I have been through this situation where we're like, we're grabbing some of the eats and we're like, we're kind of, you know, looking around the room, trying to find some way to inch our way into conversation without feeling weird, but it's gonna feel weird either way. Just get in there and start to contribute. Great, great example here, and I'm gonna use Boom Blogger as an example. Boom Blogger just came out of nowhere one day over the past, I would say, a couple months, and Boom Blogger's got the idea. Just get in there and don't be afraid to just be a real person, ask real questions, interact. Questions is almost always the easiest connector. Go in asking questions. Uh, none of this you know, low tier stuff like how are you doing or what's the weather like in your neck of the woods. Find something relative to the niche. So if I'm going into a vegan community, I just would say, hey, what's everybody's favorite recipe that they like to do that costs less than $10? There you go. Uh, Michelle Martin asks, it was about the audio question earlier yeah. about vintage children books having turned them into audio. So what are the rules with, cause she's in Australia. So what are the mm. rules with like find away voices in public domain? Cause I assume vintage children books are public domain. Uh, unfortunately you're going to probably have to look into their terms of service. Uh, frequently asked questions. I just don't, this is the, yes, stump me on this one. I, when it comes to public domain, I, I would recommend this. There was a period of people just attacking public domain books. Just, blah, 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 blah. It was just this whole explosion of ebooks. People were like, public domain, let's go make some easy money. Well, the problem is, is it got flooded with all these same iterations of the same thing. You know, think and grow rich a million times over for crying out loud. You can only say it so many times. So what I would recommend is if you do look into getting into public domain, possibly think about adding some type of value, be it cliff note versions, uh, be it additional insights within that. So there is always just that end of things and you always make, gotta make sure that you fully disclose it is a public domain work and not of your own. And hello, I just saw Marilyn Hill stop by. She was in my live earlier, so thank you for stopping by. Um, let's see, what is next? Mark Brownless comments, Amazon now has a section where you can publish fan fiction and sell your books, so genres are limited. So no James mm. Bond or Star Wars. I'll look it up and put it on the site. Thank uh, you very much. Appreciate Shannon, it. thank you for coming back. Uh, ha Boom Blogger, how many pen names do you have? Too many. <laughs> Too many. I have an Excel sheet that keeps track of it for me. Yeah. I want to say, well, I have to scroll down a little bit. So it's over 30. So that's all I know. I probably forgot more pen names than I care to remember. As far as underneath my own writing, one, two, three, four, four off the top of my head. I know I'm missing a few, oh, five. Yeah, so it's a lot, it's a lot. <laughs> Richard Heslop, how do you recommend reviving an old book that doesn't rank or get sales anymore, didn't have the paperback or audio yet, but will soon? What's the best way to revive the book? Uh, run an Amazon advertising campaign. I would say do in a couple of them and get some keywords that are related to your niche. From there, you're gonna pay attention to your impressions to clicks to sales. If you're not getting very many impressions, uh, you need to probably increase your, your click cost ratio. If you're getting a lot of clicks, um, excuse me, let, me, let me say this again. If you're getting impressions but no clicks, tons of impressions and no clicks, uh, chances are your covers hit. If you're getting a ton of clicks but no buys, then your book description needs to be fixed or your price point needs to be adjusted. And if you're getting impressions to clicks to buys, then you're right on the right track. I've had some books that were completely dead. I tried it out earlier this year on a book that I had that was literally in the millions as far as a BSR rank and I tossed it into an Amazon advertising campaign and I tweaked a few of the keywords that were within it and pulled out the high performing ones, created another ad on it, and next thing I know it, this thing's pulling in back into hundreds again. So I was like, huh, well, there you go. So sometimes it's just a case of just getting it back out there and be and building that relevancy again. Folks, the name of the game, and especially when it comes to Amazon, Amazon is, is a search engine, and search engines that are based on algorithms. Algorithm 
on Amazon and you know YouTube or Google, so on. It's all developed on relevancy. And what creates relevancy? It's buys, it's eyes, it's shares, it's interaction and engagement. Those things are indicators. If no one's buying, no one's engaging, no one's consuming the content, the relevancy drops down considerably. So I would say one of the easiest ways is to just put an advertising campaign up because it's gonna, first of all, raise your relevancy up just a little bit more. Even if nobody buys it, it's gonna raise that relevancy back up. And also it's gonna give you some key metrics to understanding why are people not buying it. You're getting a ton of impressions and no buys, your cover should hit. If you're getting a ton of clicks, no buys, your book description or your price point need to be adjusted. I almost say price point, and even Brian Meek says this inside his Mastering Amazon Ads book. He, he says, don't, don't mess with the price point. You know, it's always the book description when it comes down to it. If someone's not buying it, that's probably the book description. You have not give a compelling enough reason for a person to part ways with their money and purchase your book. Uh, cover design with Amelie. Do you guys use keywords everywhere? If so, does it make a difference for your sales volume, finding high search niches and low competition in Amazon? I use it um, just as a guideline. I don't use it as a be all end all. When I'm doing keyword research, I just am like, oh, it has, you know, like a search number. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just a general tool for me. What about you? You just turned me on to it actually more recently. Um, I, I've seen people use it before and to be honest with you, it's on my thing, but I don't pay attention to it. I don't know why. I've, it's one of those Chrome extensions I've left on and I just don't use it. So uh, I, I use for keyword research primarily keyword tool dominators, mine, and then uh, for Amazon specifically, KDP Rocket. Uh, those are my two favorites. Um, Jan Marie Kelly, if your time is limited, work full time, care for parent, et cetera, and you're trying to grow your business, mm -hmm. What would you focus on? You do so much, write books, design merch, YouTube videos, Facebook group, et cetera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I don't have to care for my mom. So that's, that's one thing that's, you know, if any, if you are ever, you ever look at Kelly and I, this is our full-time business. This is what we do. And um, so if you find yourself in a full-time job and you're only having to do it part-time, please don't, don't expect to do the same work volume as us. I, I just, I would just say at this point, Figure out what, first of all, fulfills you and moves the needle. You know, let me explain. It's gotta make you kind of like be excited to do it. You, you gotta be like, oh man, I can't wait to do this. And the next thing is, it's not enough to just be passionate about something because I can say, I wanna go, you know, I'm passionate about becoming an NBA you know, basketball player. It ain't gonna happen, I'm terrible. I'm like really awful. So many freaking injuries and I'm just unathletic and awkward. It won't ever happen, ever, ever. And so I can be passionate about it. That ain't gonna move the needle. That's not gonna pay my bills. So you gotta figure out that balance of fulfillment and at a, that achievement, that, that way you can move the needle. So that way you can start to really open up the floodgates. And I would say find the path of least resistance. The thing that's gonna get you the quickest victory right now. I used to work with uh, personal training and I worked with many people in weight loss. And a lot of people will come to me and be like, I wanna lose 100 pounds in the next two months. Not lying. I've heard that way too many times. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, why don't we start with just changing a few habits? And if we lose maybe a couple pounds initially, then I'd like to consider that a victory. So step back, figure out what's gonna be some micro victories that are gonna help encourage you and get you to where you're feeling fulfilled and the needles moved. Yes. I'm getting hungry. I'm ready for tacos. Uh oh. Are you ready for it's tacos? It's taco night, everybody. I need a taco night button. There's a yeah, lot of questions left, yeah, though. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's keep it rolling. Let's see. Boom Blogger asked a really interesting one. I'm sorry, you asked a few before them, but this is interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, how early do you guys get up? How much do you sleep? Do you both get up? Ugh. How much you sleep both? What was that? I get tongue tied when oh. I'm hungry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. You're first. I get up. I like getting up at six, but I usually get up at seven. Um, we go to bed eh, between 10 and 11 ish. Mm -hmm. I need seven and a half to eight hours of sleep. If I get less than that and I'm not in Vegas, I'm just the B word. I'm sorry. Um, 
I, I think it's fascinating how people can go through on less sleep. I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I think it's fascinating how people can go by on less sleep, but I guess we're all made different. Yeah, I uh, it, it varies from, from one day to the next. I find typically I'll go lay down and I'll do reading, which most time I either open up my Kindle or I will turn on YouTube and turn on captions and I'll just read. And uh, I'll just typically roll over on my right-hand side and just... Um, typically falling asleep right around midnight. So if you guys ever see me on social media responding to something, I'm probably already laying in bed and doing my thing. Like some of you that follow me on Instagram, I usually post my word of the day right as soon as I'm shutting off my phone and going to sleep. Uh, so yeah, uh, I can function on four hours sleep. I don't like to go any more than about eight to nine hours because otherwise my injuries from pro wrestling get the best of me, like my neck, my back, my knee, my ankle, like it hurts. I can't sleep too long. <laughs> Shannon, you're a sweetheart. I I just I wish I could go on less sleep, but I've tried. I'm just I'm just no good. And I'm tired. But I I agree. If I get too much sleep, I also feel like a b word. So. Yeah. And speaking of Shannon, she brought up a really good one. This is great advice, and I, I endorse this wholeheartedly. If you're passionate about writing, be a writer. If you're not passionate about cover design, hire someone else to make your cover. So true. In fact, there's a great story, uh, success story here in Riley Morrison. He's been on this channel before and I interviewed him more recently in uh, the author spotlight on Facebook. And uh, he had a great first year in the business and going into his first year, this guy didn't have very much discretionary time and discretionary expenses, but he made it work with what he had. So when he wasn't able to afford an editor, what he did was he broke it down, his editing, into monthly payments. So he would send out a chapter for a month and it would get edited in that month and then so on and so forth and became a part of his daily method of operation and, well, monthly in that specific instance. So if you are finding that you can't afford something, then make it work. Find some way that it can work. Otherwise, as Rob Archangel puts it so well is, you're gonna to have to pay one way or another, be it financially speaking or sweat equity. So you're gonna to have to choose one or the other. And if it's sweat equity, anticipate, you're gonna be working your tail off for a long time before you really get the stuff out there. And especially if you hate cover design. I, For me, I'd just rather hire someone and be done with it. Um, Last question, uh, cause Julie says you need to feed me. So we need to listen to Julie. Um, Aaron Chase, can I clarify that I'm able to publish the books in the public domain? Am I allowed to publish the books in the public I, I domain? I don't know, Aaron, if this refers back to a previous question. Yeah, just uh, um, rewind, rewind the video they, and watch that. I had already kind of covered the public domain. But. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to be a jerk about it, but, you know, we kind of already covered that. Oh my goodness, Jan Marie Kelly, look at you, dropping us a five spot for some tacos. Well, we're not going anywhere. The tacos is here in the house. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, well, before we do a breakaway, uh, I do want to say the word of the day is apoplectic. It's easier for me to say. I, I didn't even know Julie Broad was in the house. What's happening, Julie Broad? You get yourself a banana sticker. Uh... Folks, don't forget, check out booklaunchers.tv. I did mention her earlier today. When it comes to reviews, she gets some great advice over there. So apoplectic, apoplectic. Can you use that in a sentence and say it 10 times fast? Yeah, so in any event, this has been our subscriber hangout for the night of Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, every week. You want to make sure that you join us again this next Thursday. We had an impromptu live session the other, uh, back on Monday. It was awesome. We had like over 50 people in the house. So if you guys are up for something like that, make sure that you join us again. And also, hey, don't forget, we also have the community tab on your channel and a community tab on mine. If you want to access my community tab channel, go to selfpublishingwithdale.com slash tab. You go on in there and I'm pretty much putting up posts daily, sharing some relevant stuff and uh, get on in there. Would love to hear from you. Hit the thumbs up, hit the, you know, get a comment. Uh, let's, let's make it a party. It's going to be fun. It's going to be almost like a hippie drum circle, but with less like smelly BO and pot. That'll be awesome. Actually, it's nowhere near like a drum circle. Well, if you enjoyed today's broadcast, make sure that you head on over to this next video. It's over here. You're going to go ahead and click that thing, and you're going to make sure that you watch the video. 
and drop your thoughts and comments on that one as well. In the meantime, in between time, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale. And Kelly. We'll see you soon.